Hey friends, it is me Alana. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to be doing my January wrap up for this video here. <laughs> So for the month of January, I read about 10 books, um, which is amazing for the beginning of the year because I really wasn't expecting to read a lot and I basically surprised myself. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I did that. I'm hoping that this means I can start getting back into my channel and posting more videos. I'm really going to try, so we'll see how that goes. But to get back to the books, so the first thing that I read in January was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This is book number five in the Throne of Glass series. In case you guys don't know, all of last year, even when I took my little hiatus from my channel from posting videos, I was reading through the Throne of Glass series. And I've been doing really, really well. I am almost done. I just have to read the last book this upcoming month and then I will be completely finished with that series and that means I can move on to the Akatar series. So uh, I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to spoil it because it's the fifth book but I really liked the dynamics in this story and I really liked that all the key players that we've been following since book one finally were all together and we really got to see a big powerhouse group um, really like form this like big alliance thing so that was why I really love the story um the only problem I have with Sarah J Moss and her books is just that sometimes well a lot of the time there are things that happen off page and we don't really get the inkling that these things are happening until the results come back onto page so that's like the most frustrating part because some of the things that happen off page actually have some cool results like in this book and it would have been nice to be able to see what led up to these cool results um and not just like be surprised i guess so and i mean she did the same thing in like crescent city as well where i was like some of the things that went on some of it happened off page and i was like well why didn't we see this happen why are we just being told like you know what i mean so that was just like the most frustrating part but otherwise like i really enjoyed this book um i love rowan he's like probably my favorite character in all this entire series <laughs> mans can do no wrong in my opinion this follows the story of selena sardothian who is an assassin and she is released from prison in the first book to compete in this competition to be the king's favored basically and so she has to um like fight for her life essentially to be able to earn her freedom so that's how the first book is and then as the story goes on she gets pulled into the this um more meaningful uh i don't want to say adventure because i feel like it downplays what they're trying to do but for lack of a better word adventure and she has to um really pull on her strength to survive through all the things that are happening <laughs> so really excited about this the i will say also the next book that i finished was tower of dawn but i'm gonna preface this and say so i do not like kale in this series i do not like that man i hated hit being in his povs i really like detest him and so the fact that tower of dawn was through his perspective only did not want did not like i could not handle it so like i'm pretty sure i would have like been stuck and i would i probably would have uh gotten stuck on that book so cell was kind enough to send me a blog where this person like did a play by play of the entire book and so that's kind of how i read it <laughs> so i'm not gonna really count it as a read but i'm throwing it in there um that i did that which I'm glad I did because the big thing that you needed to get from that book, it didn't really ha- you, you weren't really told about it until the end of the book. And so I was like, I really would have gone through all of this annoying stuff with Kale just to get to the thing that I needed to know to get to Kingdom of Ash. So I'm glad that I did that because, again, I really do not like that man. And I don't want- I did not want- I don't want to be in his head again. I'm dreading Kingdom of Ash because I know she's about to bring his POV back and I don't want it. I do not want that man anywhere near me in my brain. So the next book I read was Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon. So this is the second book in the, I think it's Planet Barbarians or something series. Um, 
gave this three stars. This was a fun read. I don't really have any opinions on it. It was just a fun time. Just something to do. Um, it was kind of like a, a filler while I just was trying to decide what else I wanted to read um, after Tired of, of Dawn and Empire Storm. So the next book I picked up was The Unplanned Life of Josie Hale by Stephanie Edding. So this is was my January buzzword book because um, the January buzzword was life or death um, in the title or theme or whatever and so this had life in it so I went with that. So this is following a girl Josie Hale who uh, finds out that she is pregnant as she is forced to, to move back home with her parents because she's getting a really messy divorce from her husband who cheated on her. So as she's going through that one day she goes to a carnival to get a corn dog because she's craving it and she's like stressing about her life because she's trying to figure out what she's going to do to get back on track and how she's going to take care of this child it just came out of nowhere and she runs into two of her high school best friends who she hasn't seen or talked to in a really long time and they like catch up and the guys are like yeah our lives aren't really that great either like we're kind of just struggling going through the the paces as well and so one thing leads to another and they kind of form this pact to get their life back on track and they come up with this plan and so the guys also offer Josie a room in their house um to stay in because she also finds out that her parents are downsizing so she has to move anyways uh so she goes through that and so now they're all living together trying to complete this pact and um i really just enjoyed this book it was kind of like an easy kind of read it was like very simple nothing too dramatic or extra happening and i really enjoyed that about it um i believe i gave it four stars because it was just cute i really enjoyed their friendship because the guys were really there for her when she needed it um in regards to just helping her with the baby and doctor appointments and getting her where she needs to be so i really enjoyed that because they became really like the epitome of like fun uncles and the romance i thought was really cute too because she does end up with one of the guys and um i really enjoyed the fact that like they didn't just jump into anything they like really got to know each other re-solidified their friendship and then just let it blossom into more kind of so i enjoyed that as well um i think this is like a cute read if you're looking for just like something like easy nothing stressful or too too extreme or anything like that like this is definitely a book you could pick up and just breeze through it. The audio is like four hours, so. Alright, next I read, uh, or I reread The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This was obviously a reread. I read it like two years ago and I needed to reread it because I want to continue on and finish the trilogy now that the last book is out. Um, and I know she has the extra book coming out this year, but I want to get through the original trilogy first. And so, yeah, I gave this reread four stars. I enjoyed it just as much. There was a lot that I actually forgot from my first read through that I remembered with this book. So I'm really glad that I did that because I would have been a little like confused and shocked moving into uh, the second book. Especially because I forgot about the existence of like two of the boys. So that would have been interesting. But yeah, so it follows a girl who, uh, finds out that she has been put in this old man's will uh, when he dies. And so she's very confused about why, because she's never met this man before. She doesn't know who he is. And when she gets there to the will reading, she finds out that he's left her his entire inhe inheritance and company, which is like billions of dollars. And he's disowned his entire family. So the catch is though, in order for her to claim and to ac actually get this inheritance, she has to live in that in the house for like a a year, I think. And so she also has to share the house with his family, who was upset because they've been disowned and she basically has all their money. And as you can tell, like chaos kind of ensues because now she has to figure out, well, why did this man leave me all this money? Also, now she has to be on guard because this family does not like her and they are rich. So she's like, they could totally try and take me out at this point. And she also has to like solve the man's riddles that he's left to his grandsons because the man was like obsessed with puzzles and riddles and all that kind of stuff. So that's the story and I really enjoy it. I love Jennifer Lombards and the way she just pulls psychological elements into her books. Just, just a fan. If you like this movie Knives Out, which I haven't seen yet, don't hate me, but I eventually want to see it. I just need to get around to it. Um, then this, I've been told, gives Knives Out vibes. So I would check it out if you like the movie. 
All right, the next book I read was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Um, I gave this 3.5 stars. I enjoyed the storytelling and the characters and the mythology, but it was just very a lot for me in regards to just keeping up with um, like all the little plot elements and who the people are, who the characters were in the story and where they fit in. It was just a lot for me. And the best way I can describe it is that like I watch a lot of Asian dramas, so K-dramas, C-dramas, all that kind of stuff. And this definitely gave me C-drama vibes, especially like Chinese drama fantasy vibes. And I enjoy those for the most part, but sometimes I do get overwhelmed when I'm watching them because there's just a lot of plot points taking place in the story and then there's like a lot of characters that are coming in and out. So that's kind of how I felt with this book as well. Um, but I do want to read the second one just to see how this story goes and see if what like what happens next. So I think I will give it a try, but it was just slightly overwhelming and I hate saying that because like I'm pretty sure this book was good and I'm pretty sure other people will really love this book it's just me so please take my word with with a grain of salt thank you all right and the next book I read whoops was The Final Strife by Sarah Al Alifi so hopefully I said that right so I gave this 2.5 stars Y'all, I was so hyped for this book when I bought it. Like, I was so excited. I was like, it's gonna be so good. This cover is so beautiful. It sounds amazing. I didn't like this book. I didn't like it at all. I found the story just to be so annoying. I found the main character annoying. I found her love interest annoying. And I just found, like, it just was not what I wanted. I guess for the the best way to say it like so the way the story is sold is that like it's following the path of three girls in this society that is split up by blood if you're red blood you're wealthy you're part of the elite if you're blue blood then you are a worker you're part of the labor force and if you're a clear blood then you are a servant you are nothing and so it follows three different girl like three different girls in each category of the blood thing the thing is, that's how it was sold, but really it did not feel that way. It felt like the the story of the blue-blooded girl and the red-blooded girl took precedent over the story of the clear-blooded girl. But the thing is, the clear-blooded girl had the most important information in the story. She was the one really getting things done behind the scenes and getting stuff across and giving the two other girls the information they needed to solve the puzzles and all that kind of stuff. So it was just wild to me that it was like sold like, oh, these three are going to work together when really the clear blooded girl was doing all the work. And so also, I don't know why, but nobody talks about how this book is sapphic, which you should because it is sapphic and that's cool. But I didn't like the relationship. I thought they were both very annoying. <laughs> I just, I like did not enjoy them as a couple. And I found the blue-blooded girl to just be very ignorant and spoiled. And I don't know how else to describe her. It's just like her naivety like very much annoyed the crap out of me. And it was like, I just wished she would have like, opened her eyes more to what was going on around her so yeah that's like the best way I can describe how I'm feeling but the story follows a girl named I think it's Sila yeah Sila who is a red-blooded girl but she was taken and raised as a blue-blooded girl in order to um, complete this mission of over uh overtaking the empire and making everybody equal essentially but the mission falls apart when her her group of people is like killed and so she's kind of left to figure it out and go about life and just kind of waste away so when you meet her she's a drug addict who's really like reveling in her trauma and her sadness until one of the boys that was in her group comes back and reveals that he's been alive this whole time so he tells her that the plan is still in place and they need to basically um, go ahead and sign up for the trials that will allow them to compete for spots of the like wardens, which are the people that rule this empire. 
So she misses the deadline because she decides that, oh, she's going to go visit the blue-blooded girl that really took her spot um, in her family. Because when they took her, they switched her out with a girl with blue blood. So she was like, oh, I'm going to go visit this girl and see what lifestyle she's been living that should have been mine or whatever. And so due to that, she misses the sign-up. She is then stuck to train this blue blood girl to, t to compete in her place. And it's just annoying so i'm just gonna leave it at that because that's the best way i know how to describe it but i would just say go into this not expecting what the synopsis says because to me it did not match all right the next book i read was winter's promise by christelle davos i gave this 3.5 stars um i thought this was okay i liked the storytelling um, to be honest, a lot was happening, so again, I was kind of overwhelmed with the things that were going on in this story. But apparently it's like a Pride and Prejudice, like, fantasy retelling, so... I don't know, I kind of got those vibes, I definitely understand. And I think the main character, the man, I think he's autistic, so I kind of liked that representation in there. But there was just, like, a lot of craziness going on in this story, and... To be honest, the guy was like falling in love with her, but in my head I was like, how? Because you've barely spent like more than 10 minutes with her at a time, every time you guys have met up. So I don't understand how you could love this girl already. So that's just me, I guess, I don't know. At least like Darcy and Liz in the original Pride of Purchase, they were arguing the whole time. So like, but in this book, like he barely spends any time with her. So I don't understand how he's already like hooked, but okay, whatever. So. Then, like, she's wrapped into this, like, plot of having to, uh, say, like, do the bidding of this god, and then she's stuck with his family who's trying to, like, kill her and, and her fiancé and stuff because she's been married off, and it's just, like, weird. It's, like, really weird, but I'm gonna, this was a sell recommendation, so I'm gonna give the second book a try and see how I feel about it and then go from there because I don't really know how how i really feel like i i think i liked it but i don't know for sure because a lot was happening so we'll see i guess all right the next book i read was a brush with love by Maisie edding so eddings sorry so um i gave this one four stars um i thought this was a really really cute read actually so this is about a girl and a guy and they're both in dental school and the girl's going into or she's trying to get into oral surgery and the guy's just trying to make it through dentistry and um i thought their romance was really cute because they meet and they have this like instant con connection and he's really falling for her and really striving to make her see that he's the like best guy for her but she's really struggling because of trauma in her past where she doesn't want to lose anybody else that she loves so she really like keeps pushing and pulling him away like she pulls him back in and pushes him away and so literally the story is just them going back and forth like are they aren't they like are, how are they like are they gonna be together are they not gonna be together um and not th gonna lie like that part really annoyed me the pushing and the pulling that she kept doing with him because it, it was like frustrating and that you could tell he was getting frustrated too but i really liked how genuine their connection was like even when they were just friends at first like they really could just spend hours with each other and have fun and and just like enjoy each other's company without like any expectations or anything like that so i really liked that about this story and i thought they were super duper cute i'm definitely probably gonna give uh one of her other books a try too because i think they follow another they follow other characters that you meet in this and so i'm really excited to uh check that out because they were actually all really cute i also really loved her friend group especially because so the main girl struggles a lot with anxiety so trigger warnings for that because she does have panic attacks and like her anxiety is very prevalent in this book but uh, I really enjoyed the fact that her parent, her friends were always there for her. Even when they had to call her out for shit. Like, they were still like, bro, we love you, but you need to figure this out. Like, you can't keep living like this. And so I really, really appreciated that too. Alright, so the last book in my little uh, read reading reading uh, reading chaos i don't know the last book i read was a muse of nightmares by laney taylor so this is the last book in the stranger dreamer duology i i really enjoyed the stranger dreamer um so i was excited to pick this up and just finish the duology and see how everything ended i gave this four stars i thought it was pretty decent ending for the most part this i'm obviously not going to spoil it because it's the last book so i don't want to spoil it for anybody just in case anybody still hasn't read it 
but um, I really enjoyed Strange. I thought he was so such an interesting character because he was so positive despite the fact that all these negative things were happening to him or around him. And I really enjoyed that he was kind of like that positive light that a lot of people needed whenever he was around them. Um, I liked Sarai for the most part. I'm not sure I, if I agree with the way her story ended, but this book was already written. And I thought like this story was like done really well the pacing was well i really enjoyed the fact that you really couldn't take a side on who was wrong in this story because everybody was like the actions that were taking place um from specific people were products of the trauma that were placed upon them so i really thought that was like a it was like an interesting way to present this story in itself because there were many parties coming in with like thoughts of revenge and and um, retribution but like it was due to the actions that were placed upon them from previous people who didn't exist anymore so it was interesting it was an interesting commentary and way of really thinking about like generational trauma and how that really plays an effect on people and the actions that they um, portray and like move forward with so i really loved that and then i enjoyed the ending i kind of wish laney taylor would um continue on with like maybe some short stories i know somebody told me that she has a patreon where she like posts like stories like that um but i don't want to do that so just publish it and i'll read it <laughs> in case you don't know this story is about um lazlo strange who is obsessed with this city called weep and the mysteries behind it especially because its name was is not really weep its name has been hidden from everybody for like years and years so one day the leaders of weep come and they're like we need people to volunteer to come help us with an issue and so lazo volunteers and he gets to go and like achieve his dream of going to this place and really seeing what it's about and um in that uh he starts to really discover who he is and just really grow as a person while also trying to discover how to help them with this issue that they're having so then this book just carries on from book one basically all right so those are all the books that i read <laughs> in january um i'm really grateful that i was able to still have the reading bug because i was not expecting it to hit this early in the year so i'm really really excited about that um i'm hoping this means that i can like this will fuel me to be able to make more videos soon and really just post and edit stuff and give you some motivation. If you guys like the video, but go ahead and give it a good old thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know what you read in January, what your favorite book was, um, or maybe what first book of the year was in January, because I always like to know that. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. I promise I'm going to come back from hiatus. I'm working on it, okay? Please. Thank you. Okay, bye. You guys are awesome flowers and wonderful weeds.